Hey guys, uh, David here, and you know I wanted to uh, talk to you a little bit about uh, why people do nutritional fasting, uh, you know, intermittent fasting, and it's actually you know really quite uh, it's actually quite prevalent, of uh, course, in the social media. You see a lot of people talking about it, um, but you know, beyond you know the anecdotal stuff where people say I've lost forty pounds off intermittent fasting, you know, actually it is it is pretty extraordinary in its capacity to uh, to help facilitate weight loss. It's actually amazing, but that's not all it does. Um, you know, I'm a competitive bodybuilder and I, and I use intermittent fasting, of course, uh, for getting into contest shape because I find it makes it, uh, makes it the whole process a lot less stressful. Quite often you'll find that will be um, a lot of uh, physique athletes, you know, 20 weeks out, you know, uh, uh, 20 weeks outside the show, they start cutting down on their uh, calories and they start restricting a lot of the sugars, of course, and push the training intensity up. And you know, I feel a little bit like a lazy athlete when it comes to that because I don't stress out that much about it at all. In fact, I'm competing in about six days and I had a glass of wine last night, so I'm not really overly um, um, I'm not really overly stressed out about the whole process. Uh, and the reason being is that one, this is my lifestyle, so I have a very clean eating, healthy lifestyle. You know, pretty much twenty four seven. I enjoy a glass of wine. I enjoy uh, French fry, mainly yam fries. I, don't, I like yam fries more so. But, uh, but I enjoy my indulgences, but it's just, but 80 to 90% of the time, I really spend a lot of time, of course, in investing in my health. Um, because it's the only body I got. And, uh, and as the expression goes, I'm sure you've seen it, if, if your body's not working, where are you gonna live? So, but when, when intermittent fasting, uh, I, I, about 22 years ago, I, I uh, did an internship in natural health care, and I became, I became a chartered herbalist, and I was trained as a biokinesiologist and studied touch for health and ginger dough acupressure. And I really got into, of course, a lot of the healthcare modalities. And fasting, of course, was a part of it. So we went through, um, uh, did a kidney uh, or liver, liver and gallbladder uh, cleanse one time, and actually drank a half a bottle of olive oil, 500 milliliters of olive oil, I drank in one sitting. And you chase it with some lemon juice just to purge the gallbladder. I tell you, that was, uh, was not, a fun, not a fun experiment. Uh, but why I did it and why I explore these things is that I've worked around enough people that are not doing well and I just don't want to be that. I don't want to be, um, you know, um, to become a part of the problem as I get older and I'm a part of the older generation now. Um, I, I don't want my parts to start falling out and for the medical system to declare that, yeah, you don't need that, you don't need that liver yeah, or, you know, you don't need that kidney, well, it's hacking out. Uh, it's, a, it's an irrelevant organ. You know, I'm not, I'm not, fat, I'm not interested in having the allopathic medicine decide, you know, on my health, when I know nutrition can really play a massive role. And it can, obviously can't, uh, you know, stop uh, everything from happening, but it can sure damn give me a, um, kind of stack the deck in my favor. But we look at all the various type of cleanses. There was the master cleanse, I did that as well. I think it was seven days of, uh, of course, uh, distilled water, um, apple cider vinegar, um, lemon juice, what else to have? Uh, maple syrup, cayenne pepper, and a huge jug, and I'd be drinking liters of this stuff, liters and liters of this over the course of a week. Uh, and I, along, along with that, I think I took some alfalfa tablets and some comfort friend you um, And so the problem with some of these fast, and these are the water fast, the juice fast, is that they just lack a whole lot of necessary items uh, to really support the body nutritionally. Um, and, and of course, when you look at, uh, if you go into the NIH, so the National Institute of Health, and look at all the, the periodicals, there's some just amazing amount of information you can go through. And you know, you, you use a critical eye because just because it's published as a research article doesn't mean it's the truth. It just means somebody either did a small or large study, and they found these ideas, uh, you know, to be you know, somewhat relevant. And but it, but it, it's curious to look at you know, what consistently they find with fasting. Now. <clears throat> the fasting in Germany is short term, right? So it's generally within around 48 hours or so, and generally not too, too long term. And here's the reason Here's the reason being, when you look into intermittent fasting, and let's say we take a 40, 48 hour window, uh, <clears throat> what happens when the body goes into a fast state, fasting state is that the body starts to, to secrete growth, growth hormone. Um, for women, it's about a 1200% increase. For men, it's about 2000% 2, 2, increase in growth hormone. Um, now, why this happens, and, and I, I always knew it did, I just never knew why, right? Um, and of course, you know, I'm a, I'm a why guy, <laughs> I gotta figure out why. So, um, so when I started exploring it, what I, what I discovered, of course, what the research was telling is, is that when we go into this fasting state, of course, the body's starting to recycle old cellular machinery, right? So organelles and parts of different parts of cells, 
uh, you know, old immune cells, anything that was just the body uh, deemed uh, ready for uh, recycling and repair, it would actually go into that process. Of course, in order to induce change and growth, we need what? Well, we need growth hormone. Well, that just, that's like, that just made sense. So understand, well, that's what was going on. So as the growth hormone levels increased, it had, a, a, of course, a multifunctional purpose. A lot of other things beyond the scope of my understanding, I'm sure, of why it's there. But one of the things that, you know, I saw that... Uh, it was a part and parcel of, of course, was that repair mode of the, of the of the cells in the body. And what a cool thing to be able to do to recycle old, worn out parts instead of actually continuing to use old immune cells and old cells and, and potentially allow those cells to, to create a, a cellular dysfunction inside my body. I don't want to create my liver or my kidneys and my heart or my skin or my muscles out of cells that actually have a, a problem with some of the inner mechanisms. And if I can use fasting, intermittent fasting to uh, minimize that risk, then I'm all over it. Uh, plus, I get to, I save a day, a day or two worth of eating, so that's good for me as well. <laughs> um, the other fascinating part, of course, that we see research and look at type two diabetes and looking at um, uh, the NIH was actually looking at uh, the ability to to resensitize the human body to insulin, and found that diabetics that were under following very precise protocol when it came to intermittent fasting also had really uh, pretty tremendous effects and, and results from using fasting to support uh, uh, increased sensitivity to insulin, of course, which decreases our requirement for external sources of uh, insulin, like metformin and that sort of thing. So that was actually very cool. And also went into research, also looking at stroke clients and they were using, and they found fasting actually changed some of the metabolic uh, um, uh, environment inside the body and also it protected the brain against further damage for stroke clients, but also in, in, incurred this whole process of neurogenesis, which is the creation of new uh, ne uh, brain cells. And it's all really very fascinating. And of course, what most people you see using fasting for is weight loss. Right. And for me, weight loss is the last part on the list. For a lot of people, it's the first. For me, it's the last. But how it works for, of course, weight loss, of course, it goes back to a, to a couple things. One, now we look at, as we go into the fasting state, we, our growth hormone levels spike, which is really good. And that generally lasts within about a 48-hour period. Uh, the upside about that is that when our growth hormone levels are high and our calories are very low, let's say we're in a fasting state, the body won't touch the muscle tissue. Isn't that beautiful? The muscle tissue cannot be harvested for energy during that fasting state within that 48 hour window according to, uh, according to the research. So the cool thing is what, what can it use? It uses all the available blood sugar first and that generally occurs within the first 24 hours and then the second 48 hours of course the body goes after what? Stored fat, right? Which is again very very cool. Now one challenge to that, okay? So let's one more, there's a caveat, there's always a caveat. So when the body's going after these uh, uh, stored, uh, of course, the stored fat we have in the body, which is a bonus because we all want that, me included, is that as it releases the fat back in the system, one of the reasons why uh, many individuals nowadays uh, struggle with weight loss is that it's because of the environmental toxicity that gets built up in fat cells. Because a lot of, a lot of chemicals are fat soluble and these inorga inorganic compounds get circulated into our body because we take it through our water, air, or through our skin, uh, or our food supply, of course. And, and once the liver determines that it has no mechanism in which to get rid of this product or break it down and do anything with it, it simply helps the body uh, create uh, 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 fat and then it stores the, uh, the inorga inorganic compounds in there for a later date. So when the you know, kind of time capsuling this garbage that we end up uh, getting exposed to. So when we re-release this, this stuff back into the system, that this, these toxins, as you want to call it, back into the bloodstream, the liver may say, I still have no mechanism which to deal with this product because... Well, it's an inorganic compound. Man made it. I don't get it. I can't get rid of it. So we use botanicals, and there's a whole series of botanicals that you can utilize at the same time. And these botanicals are actually very important because they actually have a binding action, which is basically like a, a, a magnets that attract you to each other. So as, as these botanicals uh, are flushing the bloodstream, as we utilize them throughout the day with tons of water, of course, the, the toxicity is floating around. These, these, you know, these compounds are floating around that don't belong there. And of course, the, the botanicals, right, a lot of the... Um, uh, these amazing products created by nature have a binding action. We'll actually hang on to it and, and, and shuttle the, uh, the inorganic compounds out of the body. So get rid of the toxicity for us. So we can't just not eat and lose weight. It's not that simple. So, you know, the, the whole idea of, of uh, nutritional science really has come a long way. But it's such a massive, massive field of interest. And so many millions of variables. It's, uh, so it's never as cut and dried as you think. 
and most people doing it in a nutritional program, you may be doing exactly the same one, but it'll be a slightly has to be slightly adjusted to you because you, you'll react and function slightly different depending on your gen genetic potential, depending on your history, depending on where you are in your life. So there's lots of things to consider. But at the end of the day, I think intermittent fasting probably is the healthiest and best thing anybody can do. And for myself, I am I, I pledge myself that I will do a fast at least once every two weeks for the rest of my life. Because what an incredible way to ensure your state of health long term. And aside from the, the, the wonderful side, of, the side effect of having, well, helping the body get rid of fat more efficiently, it's just it's going to make me live a lot longer as well. So I want to live longer. I want to look good while I'm doing it. And, um, and of course, dropping my calories off for one, one or two days every so often isn't that big of a price to pay for, for excellent health. So hopefully that makes sense. And I uh, hope you guys have a great, great week. Bye.